If you're looking for the National Cricket Championships, then you're on the wrong channel. You're watching the Roadrunner Review, the 30-minute magazine show that features Metro State sports and their highlights from the past month. Yeah, there's definitely no cricket highlights here, but we do have a lot of basketball highlights to catch you up on. We'll also have women's soccer head coach Adrian Almer is in studio to help us reflect on the magical run in the Sweet 16. All this and more coming up on the Roadrunner Review. <laughs> So great to have all of you joining us on the show. I'm Kevin Hall along with Peter Aragon and it looks like we both survived the Mayan apocalypse. Just barely, but I did see some fireballs out there or maybe those are just Peyton Manning touchdowns. But one, another one who did survive was Paul Luellas who brings us all the latest Roadrunner news. Thanks guys and it's really good to see that you made it into 2013. Well it's time for some Metro State news from this past December and we're going to start with some men's hoops. Former basketball superstar Mark Worthington has been selected to the 2013 Rocky Mount Athletic Conference Hall of Fame. Worthington will be joining six other individual inductees and three teams to this prestigious class. The former Roadrunner helped the team win the national championship in 2002 and carried the team to two more Elite Eight appearances during his career. In his senior season, Worthington was named National Player of the Year by both the RMAC and the National Association of Basketball Coaches after averaging 20 points, 6 rebounds, 2.2 assists, and shooting 50% from the floor. A big congratulations to Mark for his accomplishment. He will also be inducted to the RMAC Hall of Fame on July 12th, and you can bet the MSBN will be there to bring you the exciting event. Also being recognized for their great efforts are current Roadrunners Carissa Price and Lauren Quijano. Both outstanding athletes were named All-American this past December. Price led the women's soccer team all the way to the Sweet 16 in only her sophomore season and was named All-America third team. The Gilbert, Arizona native led the team with 16 goals and 35 points and recorded five game winning goals during their 15 win season. Kihano is named All-America Honorable Mention after leading the volleyball team to the RMAC and NCAA tournaments. The sophomore averaged almost three kills per set and led the team with a 304 hitting percentage. Great job, ladies and gentlemen. You have to be super excited to see a couple of sophomores playing at this level so early in their careers. Thanks, Paula, and big congratulations to Mark Worthington, who will now sit among the greatest of all time in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. And did you know Worthington is still playing professionally overseas? So it's great to see him doing what he loves. And now that leads us to our men's basketball team, who came into December ranked third in the nation. They look to keep the good times rolling. First up for them in conference play was Regis University. The Roadrunners 4-0 on the season, and this team feasts on points off turnovers. Prime example, they're meeting with the Rangers at the Auraria Event Center. Jonathan Morse comes up with the steal and he finds his fellow big man in Nicholas K, who finishes strong on the dunk. Metro up 20 to 10 early. This time Demetrius Miller, I'll take that, and he took it all the way for the breakaway basket. The Rangers turned over the ball 18 times in the first half alone. Second half now, Jefferson again playing more like a ball hawking secondary than a guard right there on the errant pass, and Morse is all alone underneath the basket for the easy deuce. This time Jefferson nabs the Ranger from behind and takes it all by himself for two of his 20 points. The juniors swiped five steals and helped the team score 33 points off 22 turnovers. Just talk about the thing that makes you guys Metro State basketball is those points off turnovers. I think you had like 38 points off turnovers, incredible number. Just talk about what that means to you guys. Uh, defense, we, uh, defense is our main thing. We a good defense or good offense sets up good defense. So when we score the basketball, we get to set up our defense. And like defense is really our key to our success. Yeah, that's our calling card, pressure defense and, and, you know, forcing those turnovers to get easy baskets. They shot 60%, but they turned it over 18 times, so that kind of balanced it out there. That's who we are, though. We turn people over. Everything gets kick-started off our defense. The Roadrunners stay perfect in conference play, defeating UC Carroll Springs and CSU Pueblo on the road the following week. Demetrius Miller dropped in a career-high 31 points to help Metro roll over the mountain line 79-54. The senior guard hit on 12 of 17 from the floor while connecting on five of them from beyond the arc. One great night wasn't enough for Miller who scored 20 points in the 20 point win over CSU Pueblo the next night. He also got some help as three other runners also hit double figures in the box score. 
Metro now sits 7-0 on the season and 3-0 in the RMAC. Senior forward Jonathan Morris earned some accolades after the 2-0 weekend on the road. Morris earned Defensive Player of the Week in the RMAC after averaging 9.5 rebounds, 2.5 block shots, and 1.5 steals in the two wins. The Boulder native helped Metro outscore its opponents in the paint by a whopping 72-50. Back home to downtown Denver as they took on Black Hill State, or what we like to call J-Mo's Block Party. J-Mo gets block number one on Cameron Anderson to get the party started off right. Then Morse getting a swat on Brody Brisk, but Brisk doesn't learn his lesson and gets a shot blocked again. Brady Bisgard decides to enter the paint. If he had been paying attention to the rest of his team, he would have realized that this was not going to end well. For those of you keeping track at home, that makes four. We head into the second half, Ryan Allen to the rim, but the big man right there for block number five. The dude was a blocking machine, and he finished with a lucky number seven in the block department, leading Metro to the easy 90-64 win. Metro looking to make it 9-0 on this season before the Christmas break. They took on Shattering State, and those three-point shots were falling for the red and blue. First Miller drains it from the corner spot to kick off the scoring. Then Jefferson left all alone on the wing. Metro opened up the game on a 24 to nothing run. Then in transition, Jefferson finds Miller for what else? Another long ball. Mitch McCarron, look how much space is between him and the defender. The sophomore will make those all day. Gotta play some defense. Another blowout performance as Metro crushes Shadron by 32 points. And after a strong month of December, they've moved up to number two in the nation. And also, good job to J-Mo on that Defensive Player of the Week honor. Well, we have plenty more coming up on the show. Two-time national champion Adrian Almarez is here in studio. You don't want to miss that. But coming up next, our women's basketball team looks to rebound off that tough November start as conference play begins. They look to get back to their roots of defense and rebounding. We're coming right back here on the Road Runner View. We know you want family-friendly sporting events. Sporting events where you can be comfortable. And entertained in a positive environment. Watching great individuals and teams compete. With commitment, effort, and good sportsmanship. That's what the Division II Game Environment Initiative is about. Be a part of the excitement and find out why. These student athletes say with pride, I chose. I chose. I chose Division II. The season never ends here at the MSBN, and sometimes we drag, so sometimes we need a kick in the butt. Rafi! Are you kidding me, Rafi? You call that a highlight tape? That's pathetic. Who taught you how to rap a chord, Babish? That's a joke. You call this a tape job? Rowdy! Are you serious? Do you call that dancing? That's terrible. The Roadrunner Review is brought to you by its proud sponsors, Panorama Orthopedics and Spine Center. From sports injuries to spine injuries to total joints for arthritis, they are in your neighborhood caring for your injuries. Located at three convenient locations, Golden, Littleton, and Thornton. Welcome back. Our women's basketball team scheduled a brutal non-conference schedule and ended November with a losing record at 2-3. and three. But with a team in major transition, we knew there were going to be some growing pains. That's right, Kevin. And Metro had a chance to get back on the winning track with the start of conference play at home. Metro taking on the Rangers from Regis University. Tanya Javi hoping for a good showing against their inner city rivals. Not a great start for the home team. Kara Larson with the mid-range bucket. She led her team with 15 points. Emily Wood had her long-range shot going, hitting three long balls in the game. She finished with a game-high 17. Regis led the entire game until 2.41 left when the senior Kristen Valencia connects on this jumper to give Metro a 60-58 lead. Regis responds on the next possession. Megan Halenga jukes past the defense for the bucket and the foul. She makes the free throw and Metro down by one. Kristen Valencia comes right back with another big shot to retake the lead, but Regis was clutch at the free throw line to escape with a 65-62 win. Metro drops a 2-4 and 0-1 in the Armac. The Roadrunners hit the road for two tough tests, taking on 4-1 UC Carl Springs and 4-0 CSU Pueblo. But the journey south proved to be a great trip as the team came away with two huge back-to-back -back victories. Metro stifled the Mountain Lions, holding them to just 16% shooting, converting on just four shots on 25 attempts. They held a 30-14 halftime lead and never looked back. 
The next night, Chris and Valencia recorded her 10th career double-double, scoring 14 points and pulling down 16 rebounds. The defense was just as stout, keeping that Thunder Wolves offense at bay, shooting just 32%. Back home to the Auraria Event Center to try and make it three wins in a row. Ty Jensen with the air ball, but Autumn Chester right there for the putback. Metro races to a 16 0 lead. Another new face, Kaya DiGarma, with the steal and races all the way for the breakaway bucket. Runners up 30 14 at the midway point. The Yellow Jackets make a game of it. Bailey Cuser drains the three pointer, and her team is within seven. But it was too much Metro and too much Emily Wood, who scores a career-high 22 points. Metro cruises to the 62-42 win. Can they make it four straight? The home team facing off against Shannon State. And it was the Eagles who came out strong, building a 9-8 lead. Kane Simpton with a nice move to score two of her team-high 11 points. But that would be as exciting as it got for the visiting team. DeGarmo with the drive and the dish to Jensen, who converts on the wide-open jumper. DeGarmo handed out eight assists. Then the freshman Alina Vasquez gets into the act, comes up with a steal, and on the other end, she walks in with the easy layup. But the story of the game was one Amy Nelson, who was in beast mode for the game, scoring 20 points. DeGarmo drawing the attention and finding Nelson all alone for two more. Metro finishes December with a winning record of 6-4 and 4-1 four and four and in the RMAC. Um, I think we're finally just starting to click together as a team, and... I think everyone really stepped up tonight. Everyone on the bench did a good job. Everyone's been doing their part. So I suppose just an all-around team effort, like you said. Honestly, the guards just got me the ball, and they, they were making the plays for me. So, you know, when they get me the ball, I, it's my job to score so they get their assists. So um, they just did a really good job getting the open shots. So. I think we really corrected some of the things from the night before that we talked about. And again, everyone that went in really made an effort to contribute, and it was a complete team victory. I mean. Amy came out great, finished well, you know, with 20 points, got 20 offensive rebounds, 19 assists, 13 turnovers. So all those team stats really were in our favor. So I was really, really pleased to go into the winter break. I mean, to the Christmas break, not winter break, but Christmas break with this win. It's good to see that the women's team is starting to find that chemistry. Yeah, it takes a while with a lot of new faces, but hopefully they can get their third RMAC regular season title. Coming up next on the Road Runner Review, Peter and I will sit down with Metro Women's Soccer Head Coach Adrienne Almarez as she joins us in studio for an exclusive interview. Don't go anywhere, you don't want to miss this. Are you a college student that needs a place to live? Are you still living with your parents and want your own space? The Regency Student Housing is perfect for you. The community offers many amenities such as a fitness center, two basketball courts, big screen amphitheater, all you can eat dining hall, bowling alley, arcade, free parking, and a shuttle to and from the Auraria campus. For more information, please call 303-477-1950 or visit our website at regencystudenthousing.com. Everything that makes your world hum is right here with Dax. Need it? Dax it. The Roadrunner Review would like to thank its sponsors, Jason's Deli. Real food is fresh, higher quality, more flavorful, less processed, and naturally better tasting. Get real food at any Jason's Deli location. And the Boulder Broker Inn, a proud partner and preferred hotel for Metro State Athletics. Welcome back, and we have a very special guest that joins us in studio. That's women's head coach, Adrian Almarez. She just completed her fifth season as head coach for the Roadrunners. She also played for the Red and Blue and helped Metro win the 2004 National Championship, scoring the game-winning goal. She also helped the team win another national title, this time as an assistant head coach. She became the head coach for the team in 2008, and here she is. Coach, thanks for joining us, and can you believe it's already been five years? I can't believe it. It has flown by so quickly. Coach, you won a title as a coach and a player. Which one was better? Um, you know, I, they were both great. I, I don't know if I could say one was better, more better than the other. Um, it, they were both different experiences, you know, and I, I truly enjoyed both being part of both of them. Now, is there one thing that 
you learned on your own in the past five years that you didn't learn under Metro Great head coach Danny Sanchez? Yeah, I think, you know, the big thing is finding your own way. You know, I, I learned a lot from him. He was a great coach um, to play for and, and to coach with. Um, but the big thing for me over the last five years is finding, you know, my style, um, my expectations, kind of, you know, trying to continue the program to, to be what it has been over the years and, and compete, you know, at a high level every single year. Um, but it's definitely been a journey and a learning experience throughout each season. You know, I always tell the players no two team is ever the same and no season is ever the same. So, you know, I think as a coach, you grow every year. Um, and I definitely have over the last five years. Now let's look at this past 2012 season. Mm -hmm. When you first sat down to look at this team on paper, did you think this team could reach like all the way to the Sweet 16? You know, I did. Um, I, to be honest, every season I believe that we can. You know, um, when I, these, this group of girls, we had a, a really great spring season last year and we had a core group returning. Um, and I knew they, you know, there is some, there is some talent in there that, you know, players just needed to step up and, and they did throughout the season, as well as, you know, we had some young players that um, really turned it on, especially in the end, so that was great to see as well. And now look on paper, your forwards were solid, you had some strength mm -hmm. in the midfield, your defense is arguably the best in the RMAC, mm -hmm. but you lost your starting goalkeeper from last year. How concerned were you heading to the season? And just talk about how Jordan Simpkins played for the squad this yeah. year. Yeah, you know, I'll be completely honest, I was very concerned. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, Jordan, the prior year, you know, she really didn't have a strong role within our team. She was kind of finding herself as a transfer coming in for her first year. And, you know, she did, okay during the spring season but she definitely turned it on this fall you know it was up in the air of who was going to start from day one um, and I think for her she really took you know the spot and ran with it and that's what you know I'd love to see out of all players that need to step up in moments and, and she definitely did that throughout the season and I was very proud of her um, for doing that and, and taking that role and running with it because that was a, a big spot that we needed to fill. So one player that we do need to talk about, Coach, is Carissa Price. She led the team with 16 goals, had 35 points, and that's just two years off of major leg surgery. Just talk about her season. You know, she she played, she did fantastic. You know, for a sophomore to come in and, and be an All-American and, and really impact the team, um, you know, I can't say enough. And the big thing for her is she, she wants to grow. You know, she's not complacent. Um, she wants to continue to be better. She wants to continue to impact the team and she wants to do more, you know, and I, I'm excited to see what she does in the next two seasons for Metro State. Um, but, you know, she she's a she's a great kid, works tremendously. Everything she's earned, she's worked for it. You know, nothing was given to her. Um, and I, I know it's going to continue to be that way just because of her work ethic and her want um, to succeed for this program. We have to take a break here on the Roadrunner Review. We are far from finished with Coach Almarez, and she'll talk to us about their postseason revenge tour and, of course, their incredible run in the NCAA tournament. We'll come right back here on the Roadrunner Review. Metro State Roadrunners one of the most successful Division II programs in the nation. Six national championships. 65 conference championships in the RMAC. 248 All-Americans. The season is almost here and admission is free for all students. Great prizes will be handed out at select games, so make sure you're in the crowd. You can also follow the Roadrunners through Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and GoMetroState.com. Get in the game and get rowdy. We're back here on the Roadrunner Review, and women's soccer coach Aiden Almarez is still with us. And coach, let's talk about your amazing postseason run. First, we'll start off with the RMAC tournament, where you took on Colorado Mesa at Auraria Field. 
You know, I, I think we were definitely excited um, to be at home, to play on our field, um, and obviously to go back because we knew, you know, we didn't necessarily take care of business the way we wanted to at their place. Um, and, and we came out, and we came out with a lot of energy. You know, the, like I said, the girls were excited. Um, we were playing well, and, you know, once we got that first goal, you know, we were just, it just kept coming. So it was great to see, um, and it was great to get that result um, in the first round of the RMAC tournament. And now in the first round of the NCAA tournament, you guys took on West Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. Guys went off for four goals. The first two mm -hmm. came from unlikely sources, mm -hmm. Naomi Polanco and Kelsey Newland. Yeah, you know, I think the big thing is, is for us, you know, it's hard always to play on the road um, against a team that we hadn't seen all season. Um, but, you know, once we got into a groove, you know, I, I think the first 20 minutes we were trying to find our way, a bit of nerves. Um, but once we started to get into a groove and, and Naomi got that first goal before half, I mean, the girls were just, they wanted it, you know. And to see Naomi, Kelsey, um, players that necessarily didn't get much points during the season to step up, I think it was huge. And it, it showed that, you know, any moment, anyone can have a big moment, you know, as long as they take advantage of it. And that's what we kind of talked about all season is you never know when it's your time. Um, and it's very important, especially in postseason, that you execute when it is your time and that they did that game. And then at Redemption Row continued for the team. You took on St. Edwards, who mm -hmm. you lost to earlier in the season, two to one. Mm -hmm. They were up one to nothing at halftime, and then two veterans stepped up, Carissa Price and Nicole Pollock. Mm -hmm. Just talk about that game a little bit. You know, um, it was great that we had went there earlier in the season and played at St. Ed, so we were a little bit more familiar with it. Um, and also with them, you know, we knew it was going to be a battle. They had a fantastic season. Um, lots of you know awards and, and went far you know overall within their conference um, and, and as well as getting the seating that they did um, but you know for us we knew that we could do it you know we uh, talked about them a lot prior um, you know and the big thing too is like I've told the girls you know set pieces in big games win games and all three goals were off set pieces, you know, um, against them. The goal they scored was off a set piece, and then we scored off two corner kicks. You know, and, and for us, you know, we knew it was going to be a battle, but we had to execute, and we did. Um, and, it, you know, and for all the girls, it was a, a great team effort. I mean, those girls battled. They were a physical, quick team, and our girls matched them and, and got the result in the end. And I one last question. I know you have some new jewelry on your finger. It's yes. not an NCAA championship No, ring, is it? it's not. I actually... Um, over break got engaged. Uh, Mike, my he now my fiance. Uh, he finally popped the question. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> thank coach. you, thank you. Oh, well, thank you so much, guys, for coming on the show. It was so much fun to watch your team this season, and just good luck out there on the recruiting trail. Thank you. And so we have top plays and special send off to fall sports coming up next. We do what we do. It's the women's basketball team's new motto. But what does it mean? We do what we do, it's very easy to explain. That's a very good question. Hmm. It comes from an Eastern religion that looks to the stars. I think Coach read it somewhere in the Bible. Hmm. Well, see, I think it came from the coaches may have. See, when Aristotle and Socrates meditated on the hilltop of Montezuma. I think it could be in a line of Michael Jackson's thriller. I remember it. I was standing right there. I remember it like it was yesterday, but why can't I remember it? But in Western philosophy, not knowing could be the key to life. Crop circles. We may never know what it means, but as long as they keep winning, who really cares? What was the question again? Two minute warning here on the Roadrunner Review and in light of Coach Almaraz joining us on the show, we decided to put together the greatest sounds from the fall sports season. That's right. It includes great broadcast calls, post-game interviews, and hysterical sound bites from the player profile packages. Take a listen. You can sample it, though. I could, like, drop a beat for you. Or drop a beat for you. Drop a beat for you. Garcia couldn't handle it, but coming in was Alice Green, and they get it across. What great defense by Metro State. But you know, I don't get a lot of time to tutor them, so it's all on them, and uh, sometimes it shows. Oh, brutal. <laughs> but a great one by Mars as she just says, not up in here. Rissa Price now dancing in traffic, left side, cranks one with the right foot. Ball calls in right over the hands of Yalen Yates. 
and what a cannon! Waiting for that sugar daddy. <laughs> there you go, there's an answer there. Ah, oh, jeez. Jeez Louise. Jeez Louise. I don't really beat people up, I don't know. <laughs> I just, people make me mad on the field sometimes, you know? Aruba gets a touch, oh, Hershberger has a chance here. Gets a pass to keep in the goal. We are all tied up at two apiece. Yeah, it's a great day for all of us. I'm pumped right now because I got my first goal, so it's a nice and exciting day for me. <laughs> Keanu. When why not have to beat Keanu? Looks like they have the work cut out for them. They got about And that's the one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hopefully pass the CPA exam and then become an FBI special agent. FBI special agent. It was really important, especially considering that they are undefeated or were undefeated in our conference. And this is our house. Side the attacking 20. He'll put a left foot on it on shot and go. What a goal. That was a rocket. If you look up power in the dictionary, <laughs> you will see a picture of Kylie Hahn. First one was crazy. Oh my god. It was crazy. The last five minutes were definitely crazy. The last ten were really crazy. It was actually really crazy to go through, especially it really hit me when I was walking through saying saying goodbye to all the parents and all the all my teammates. Um, but you know, I wouldn't change anything for it. And Crash told me that this is the game winner and before I hit before Abby hit it in, I hit it in the back of the net and Words can't even explain how excited we are. I'm stoked. Great sounds from the fall season. Now it's time to bring you the top plays, and they are brought to you by Miller Coors. Play number five, it's Brandon Jefferson, who came up with five steals in the win over Regis, and we have an Eric Lansing sighting. Check out steal number five and the call. Double teamed, stolen from behind by Jefferson. He's going to go all the way up for the easy layup. Brandon Jefferson, one of the best defenders in the conference. Is there any better play-by-play -play guy in the Armac? On to play number four, and how about the thievery as Kaya de Garmo robs the Yellow Jackets six times, which leads to her being named Armac Defensive Player of the Week. The junior transfer takes a steal to the house. Metro had no trouble with Black Hill State at home. How about a little offense in play number three? Demetrius Miller rewards the runner's big man who throws it right down on the defender. Jonathan Morse not known for his dunking, but makes sure this one goes down to earn a spot in top plays. Back to women's basketball as Emily Wood was firing on all cylinders in their big win versus Black Hill State. The senior piled in a career high 22 points, connecting on a couple three pointers and going six for six from the charity stripe. Great job, he dump! And a play number one, and it's the big man from Boulder once again who blocks seven shots in the route of the Yellow Jackets. Morse leads the league with 2.6 blocks per game and showed why he's the league's best swatting shots at every turn. Those are your top plays and always they are brought to you by Miller Coors. Miller Coors wants everyone to remember to drink responsibly. Well, it's been a great start to the men's and women's basketball season and with a new year, Kevin, talk about New Year's resolutions, what's yours? Well, I usually wear shorts every day of the year, so I said I'm gonna try and wear pants more often. Doesn't go professional, just saying. <laughs> well. Back to Metro Sports, make sure you go to GoMetroState.com for everything you need to know about Metro State Sports. And make sure you check us out next month for more high-flying Metro State action. For the Road and Review, he's Peter Aragon, she's Paul Rellis, I'm Kevin Hall, and we'll see you next time.